Looking for a creative outlet? Do you want to develop the artist within? The heritage crafts aren't just in the museum. Plenty of people just like you are putting a modern spin on these traditional skills. Quilting is a textile craft that is seeing a popular resurgence. People are creating everything from traditional patterns to abstract design or even pieces with social and political themes. Quilting is an art form that can be created by a group or by an individual. Quilts, both modern and antiques, can have an expensive price tag, although it is a common belief that quilting originated more for its utility than for decoration. The pioneers, I'm thinking of the pioneers of Simcoe County, they would be making utility quilts um, for warmth and they wouldn't have the resources that we have now obviously so they would use uh, old clothing or scraps or old blankets or whatever to, um, to make those quilts but I also think that those pioneer women uh, although they had to do it you know for a purpose to, to keep their families warm they were also expressing themselves in the patterns that they used and the colors and, and so many of the pioneer quilts are very artistic and beautifully put together. Like many laborious jobs, quilting was a necessity of pioneer life. Quilting was a technique to creating a new use from older fabrics, but quilting was also an opportunity for social interaction with the community. Quilting B um, was a group of ladies who got together and worked on one quilt because, because in those days most of the quilts were hand quilted, um, it would take a long time for one person to complete one quilt. So uh, just like the farmers would get together to raise barns together, the women would get together and um, take turns working on each other's quilts. Um, it might be uh, a wedding quilt or something special that they would all come together and meet at uh, one person's home, sit around a, a big quilting frame, work together. It would be a social experience for them as well. Then the quilt would get finished faster and in a social scene it would be more fun to do than sitting on your own doing it. And then when, once that quilt was finished they would move on to the next person's quilt. Because historically, quilting was considered a function of necessity, people were slow to recognize it as an art form. Today, people regard quilting with higher esteem and still reproduce the original pioneer patterns. The traditional blocks have been based a lot on things that are in nature or everyday items. For example, there's a block called bear's paw and it looks like a, the print of a bear's paw or goose tracks or any kind of um, natural thing that would inspire uh, a pattern like that. The Underground Railroad quilt, I, I don't know if you've heard of that, but the, the blocks in that quilt were used as a kind of symbols for the slaves who were heading north. The people who would help them on the way would hang out certain quilts or patterns um, to show them that it was a safe place. And so it's very interesting historically how, you know, the quilt patterns have, have meant something. You may think of your grandmother's bedspread or an old country setting when you think of quilts, but like everything else around us, technology has put a modern spin on quilt making. I, I'm sure the uh, pioneers would be envious of what we have now. I guess the, the invention of the rotary cutter made a huge difference to the quilt making world. It's basically like a pizza cutter, but it's a razor, and you, um, you, know, you can cut through eight layers of fabric at once. So that's, that's a tool that pretty well every quilt maker must have now because it makes life so much easier and you can be much more precise in cutting your smaller pieces, you know, as opposed to using scissors. There's been a huge emergence of quilt-related things that have happened in the last 15 years. Like 20 years ago, you didn't see the quilt shops and the fabrics that were available today. You, you know, you'd have a hard time finding a place to take a class. There weren't too many books out, um, but over the last few years it has mushroomed. There are a lot of people interested in making quilts. Now there's a lot of resources 
for quilters, going to guilds, um, you know, a lot of information in libraries, bookshops, a lot of books that are available, fabrics galore in, in many different shops and all kinds of new gadgets and gizmos that, you know, weren't here for, um, for people in the past. Quilting for most people is a creative outlet with opportunity to display work or give a personal present. Because of the time involved in assembling a quilt, most quilters don't sell their work, though there is a market for those who do. I sell quilts, and not just quilts, but there are different things that are quilted, like articles that are quilted that aren't actually quilts. You know, there's table runners and there's uh, wall hangings and purses and all kinds of things that are quilted. Yes, there is a market for those things uh, in craft shops and studio tours, which I participate in, which I participate, and you can make money. Uh, it's difficult to put a price on your work, though, because uh, if you're making a large quilt, it takes a long time and it takes a lot of material, and it's difficult to price your work. But um, there is a market out there for for the quilts. When you're pricing something that you've made, you're looking at the materials that you've put into it, and fabrics are not cheap these days, um, and also your time, and it does take a long time to make a large quilt. But I would say like maybe a queen size quilt that is a nice design, and, and whether it's hand quilted or machine quilted, would run somewhere between $500 and $1,000. When you have the high-end quilt artists who you know, have made a name for themselves and uh, are more in, into the art part of it, um, they can put a really hefty price on, on their work. Well, there's a, a sense of satisfaction when you complete something, of course. Also, depending on the reason you're making the quilt, um, you know, you may be making it for yourself or a special gift for a friend. It could be a wedding gift or um, it could be something that you've been commissioned to do and it's, you know, you're, you're not going to see it again. Uh, or just something that you make uh, just for the experience of making it for the, the process and then you might sell it. Uh, at the end of it so but the process I think is the most important thing for me um, that's the creative part and that's when I really enjoy it when it's finished we'll move on to the next thing another consideration for anyone thinking about trying quilting is the equipment and supplies involved today's quilters have the option of using high-end products including expensive sewing machines you could go crazy on on equipment Obviously you need a, a sewing machine. Uh, most people use a sewing machine to piece their quilt blocks and quilt machines can range from $100 to $5,000. There's all kinds of electronic uh, machines now that can do decorative stitching and all kinds of fancy tricks. You need fabric and every quilt maker loves to have lots of fabric to choose from so they you know, they often collect fabric, call it their stash. Like any other art form, today's modern quilting is about craftsmanship and artistic expression. It is a skill and creative outlet that is appreciated and admired by many people. I think really it is an artistic expression. Um, and just like many other hobbies that are out there, people are are doing it for the love of it. It's a way to express yourself, enjoy your, your free time, and end up creating something that is beautiful. For more information on quilting, or if you would like to take a course in one of the textile crafts, check out the Simcoe County Arts and Crafts Association website at www.skaka.ca.